Hey guys, welcome to a new video. My name is Jason and thanks for watching. Today we're going to be talking about this 12 volt compressor fridge from Bodega. This thing is packed with features. They offer a larger 55 liter version or a smaller 35 liter version. This one's 45 liters and it sits right in the middle. It's about 48 quarts as well. Now this line of fridges from Bodega are pretty special because they offer Bluetooth connectivity. All you have to do is download the app from the iOS store or the Android store and connect your phone to the fridge. And then once you open up the app, you can actually see the current temperature in each zone. You can adjust that temperature. You can also set Celsius or Fahrenheit settings or even low battery protection. It's pretty neat to be able to use your phone to control this fridge. Well, let's go ahead and open up the fridge. Now, when you open it, you can see there are two separate compartments. These are two different zones and you have the ability to set the temperature separately in each one. You can set one side to be a fridge and you can set the other side to be a freezer or you can do a fridge fridge or a freezer freezer combo. Inside each of these compartments is a removable basket. The removable basket is important because if you want to move the fridge around, you can actually remove the food to make the fridge lighter. Or if you have a spill down in the bottom, you can take the basket out, wipe up the spill and then put the basket back in. There's also a drain plug on the larger compartment side. So instead of having to tip the fridge on its side to clean it out, you can just wash it down, pull out the drain plug and then let the water run out the bottom. Now each compartment has a bright LED so you can see the contents of the food in each side and it only turns on when you open up the lid. Now you may have been wondering what this was as I've had the lid opened. Well, if you swing this up, it's actually a removable cutting board. And what's really neat is the cutting board fits perfectly into this slot on top of the lid so it doesn't move around. And then you can chop up your food and when you're done, you just put the cutting board right back in and lock it in place. Now this fridge has a really good latching system. Not only does it open really easily, but when you push it down, it locks in place and it really seals down against that rubber gasket so no hot air can get inside the fridge. Now another feature this fridge has is it has a reversible lid. Now if you open up the lid, you can pull straight up on it vertically, flip it around and put it in on the other side. This is useful because if you have the fridge in a place where the handle is not accessible, you either have the option to move the fridge or you can flip the lid around and that's much easier to do. Now being a 45 liter fridge, when you pack this thing with food and drink, it really gets heavy. Now that's where these wheels come in handy. They're rubberized plastic and they basically roll over any hard surface. Now when you're rolling the fridge, it's really nice to extend this padded handle all the way out. There's two clips and it extends out and you get much better leverage as you lift it up. Once you're done, you can slide it back in and it locks in place. Now on this side, there's also a handle. So if you needed to carry it empty by yourself, you could do that. Or if you want to carry it or lift it with two people, you can have someone hang on to this side and someone hang on to this side. Now this fridge has a really nice built-in touchscreen display and a USB port. The USB port works great to charge phones. I tested it and it worked on different phones that I had laying around the house. Let's go ahead and show you how to control this fridge using that touchscreen display. It shows the current temperature for each compartment. This is the big one and this is the small one. It also gives you a voltmeter, which is very useful to tell the level of your battery. It can show you if it's in Fahrenheit or Celsius and Bluetooth is enabled. You can see your max or eco mode here and your battery protection settings here. Now to change the temperature, you just push the plus or minus button. And if, you, if it's still flashing, you can push the settings button to get to the other side. You let it sit and once it stops flashing, that means it's saved. If you want to change it from eco or max mode, you push the settings button and then you tap the settings button again to go to eco or max mode. I like to leave it on eco mode because it saves more power. Max mode is just to use the very beginning when you're cooling down the fridge or if it's really, really hot outside, you can run it in max mode just to keep everything uh, in the fridge cooled down. This fridge has a USB-A port and it has this nice dust cover to keep everything out. You can turn off the fridge by using this power button here. A lot of times when I'm reviewing these fridges, I like to remove this protective cover so I can see how it's built inside. Now I'm surprised to find this really nice metal subframe and it's secured really well to the rest of the fridge. Right here you have your 12 volt compressor, you have your cooling fan on this side, and then the electronics that control the speed of the compressor over here. Now the compressor that's inside this fridge is the Washing DC25H compressor. It's a variable speed compressor, so on eco mode it pulls 31 watts, and on max mode it pulls 45 watts. So I advise you guys not to take apart your fridges. When you take the screws out of the plastic up here, they don't go in quite as well as they did the first time. 
I just take it apart so we can see the compressor model, see if it's got a sturdy frame, this one does, and there were no loose wires, so I really like this design. The fridge is 27 inches long with the handle. It's a little under 20 inches tall, and it's 18 inches wide, including the wheels. The large compartment's about 15 and a half inches tall. It's a little over 10 inches wide, and it's about 12 inches deep. Now, the only thing different on the Spall compartment is it's only eight and a half inches tall. Now, each side has a different capacity. The left zone, which is larger, has a 34 quart capacity, and the right zone, which is smaller, has a 14 quart capacity. Now, powering this fridge is super easy. You can power it off AC power or DC power. It comes with this really long 12 volt extension cable that you plug into the fridge on this side and then your 12 volt socket on this side. Or you can use the AC to DC adapter. You plug right into your 120 wall outlet and then it plugs into the fridge here. Let's go ahead and dive into the power consumption numbers on this fridge. Now I'm gonna throw up a graph on the screen so you guys can see how it performed over a 24 hour period. Now I ran the fridge much longer than this, but I wanted to average out over 24 hours so you could estimate how much battery you needed for each day. Now you can see I have the watt hours on the left and then I have three different temperatures at the bottom and each temperature is split up to two different tests. I had a fridge only test where it was set at 34 degrees and I had a fridge freezer test where it was set at 34 degrees on the large side and 12 degrees on the smaller side. Let's go look at these 72 degree results. You can see it pulled 325 watt hours total, and that was the fridge freezer combo. So it does pull a little bit more power if one side is set to a freezer. You can see this continues on with the 85 degree test. Now the 85 degree test is more of a real world test because most people will be around this temperature and it pulled 624 watt hours. Now uh, the 100 degree test is basically just to show a maxed out compressor that runs all the time. On eco mode, this would pull 31 watts times 24 would give you 768 watt hours. Now in order to get an estimated runtime using this fridge on one of these batteries, you just take the power consumption numbers that we got earlier in the video and you compare it to the available power in each of these batteries. That'll give you a really good estimate and then just remember, if you have a solar panel plugged in to any of these, you're gonna get a much longer runtime because just remember this used about 32 watts on eco mode and you can get 100 watts solar into any of these at least. These also have higher inputs on solar so you can really make sure your battery stays at 100% and you can almost run your fridge indefinitely as long as you have enough sun. Now I just wanted to show you some options that you have while you're running one of these 12 volt compressor fridges. Now I always recommend using a portable battery over your vehicle starter system because you can actually kill your starter battery using one of these fridges, especially if you're running it off your battery when the engine stopped. Now there's two benefits to using one of these portable units. The first one is that these support solar right out of the box so you can plug a solar panel in any way and you can get a lot of power back into your battery. Now the other reason these are really beneficial is that you can actually move these and the fridge. So if you don't want the fridge in a hot environment, so you can take the fridge, move it out into a shade tent with the battery. So the battery and the fridge are no longer in the hot car, but they're in a shade tent. They're in some sort of covered awning or whatever you come up with to keep these in a cooler shaded environment. Now there's two different options. You can see I have a DIY option here. This has 1,024 watt hours of storage. These are all lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is my budget one. It comes in at 614 watt hours. This one is the brand new EB55 from Blue Eddy. It has 537 watt hours. And then the EB70 has 716 watt hours. Now, these are a little bit more expensive because you're paying for higher quality components with a brand name that's better. This is super budget. I just barely put out a review on this, but it actually performed really well and it has a really high build quality. And then if you're doing something completely DIY, you'll want to check out my build video on this. This is a DIY 80 amp hour battery. Now I am building a new 100 amp hour battery. That video will be out in a couple months. All the components are going to be from US suppliers. And it's going to be a very good price battery uh, under $400 for a 100 amp hour battery. So stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited for that build. Just waiting for all the components to get here. I like to let you guys know how the compressor sounds. Let me go ahead and put my mic right up next to the compressor so you can hear it. Now I'll go ahead and move it about three feet away so you can hear what that sounds like. Overall, this compressor is really quiet. Most of the noise is actually coming from the cooling fan.
Okay guys, well now it's time to give my final thoughts and maybe if there's any issues, I'll mention them here. Now I failed to mention that Bodega does offer um, a one year warranty right out of the factory on this unit. And then if you use the registration card, the warranty card, you can get an additional year for free. So that is a two year warranty on this fridge straight out of the factory. So that's a great value there. Now the price where this comes in at is at $450. Now that's really competitive for what this is, being a smart fridge with dual zones and having the 45 liter size. Now if you had a C-Cop compressor in here, it would easily add 100 to $150 onto the price. So that's where your price is probably a little bit lower. Now I heard this fridge used to uh, have these features with them. Now it has a battery compartment over here where you can have a battery built in. Now that battery was like 175 watt hours and it was pretty expensive, like $130. That's a really, really small battery to run this fridge, you know? So um, it's, it's good that that's not really a thing anymore, but it still has these components built in. So it has the solar charge controller and it has the battery thing here. So you can use this battery bay as like a little expansion area. You can put the cords in there or something, but just know that you're probably paying a little bit extra money. So it'd be great if Bodega came out with a new version that didn't have this built in because most of these people that are running these fridges run them off a, a portable battery that has much more storage, has much more solar capability than using this smaller battery here. So they could drop the price without those two options. But overall, I feel it is pretty competitive. It definitely performed really well. I had no issues uh, whatsoever while I was testing this fridge. I tested it probably for 72 hours at least on each mode. And then um, also just let it run and run and run and just verified that everything was fine. I've been testing it for over a week. Now, one thing that I did notice is that the fan speed for the compressor is a little bit high and it's just louder. It, it, maybe it's just a louder fan. It's not the biggest deal breaker, obviously, but you definitely can hear the fan a little bit louder than some of the other compressor fridges that I've tested. Now, the benefit to that is it's probably spinning at a higher RPM, which means it's cooling off the compressor a little bit more. So it could probably run better in a higher temperature. Now, one thing I failed to mention was make sure you purchase one of these temperature uh, thermometers for a fridge. Now, they go inside the fridge so you can verify the exact temperature inside. Now, sometimes the LED LCD display is a little bit off, with this fridge, it actually did pretty good. I only noticed it was one to two degrees off most of the time. So um, maybe not super required, but it's really good to have one of these. I'll include this in the description below. This fridge is available through Bodega's website and it's also available on Amazon. Now the prices may differ in each place, but I did know it came in at $450 on Bodega's website. Now, would I recommend this fridge to anybody that's looking for a 12 volt compressor fridge that has two different zones? Yeah, I'd recommend it. It's actually a pretty big fridge being 45 liters, and it gives you a good balance um, if you ever wanted to have a small freezer and a larger fridge or the other way around. Now, if you guys have any questions about this fridge, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to answer your questions because I've really worked with this and I've spent a lot of time. I even took it apart. I always like to tear these down. Uh, sometimes it gets into the video, sometimes not, but at least you guys have the footage of me tearing it down and uh, everything looked good in there. So like I said, I definitely would re recommend this. If you guys like the content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Now, hopefully you guys stick around for future videos. Appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. I'm going to call it a night. You guys have a good one and we'll see you in the next video.